Adam gave Satan a wealth transference in Genesis. So when we see the second Adam, which is Jesus, and we see the devil takes Jesus on the high place and says, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you bow down and worship me. The devil is now boasting about the wealth transference that Adam gave the devil. I want you to think about this. So when in Proverbs, the Bible says, I think that's Proverbs 13, Solomon is talking about the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the just. Now we're seeing how Adam shifted it to the devil, the wealth to the devil. And now Solomon is talking about the wealth that was shifted to the devil being laid back up for you. And so now the death of Jesus and the blood has rekindled this promise to another height, to another dimension that now that wealth could be taken back with authority. Let's go to, um, this, this is real amazing. I want to show you something in Genesis 4. But just think about that, saints. Adam empowered the devil to be rich on earth. So Satan uses your sins in your life to steal from you. And the, the, the deceptive thing about sin is that sin feels as if you are feeling empowered. You're in control of your life. How many times have you listened to a sinner say, I'm in control. Ain't nobody tell me what to do. And they're being told what to do by fallen angels. You know, no, nobody is, is getting over on me. And there are a legions of spirits that's getting over on them and they can't see. Saints, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says that the wicked don't know what makes them stumble. I think that's Proverbs 4. The wicked don't know what makes them stumble. Yeah, that's Proverbs 4, 19. It says the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Wow. Proverbs 4.19 says that when people are sinning, they don't even know what's making them sin. So somebody may say, well, you know, I'm doing this because this person did it. But they don't know that there is another root system to that fruit system. Like there's another root that's causing that fruit. There's another root that's causing that fruit. And they never, because in darkness, you don't have light. And light is where God gives you clarity, understanding on the truth of everything. So they don't even know why they're doing something. And even their interpretation of why they do it, Satan gave them that interpretation so that they won't know the real reason why they're doing it and see how foolish it is and understand, oh, I'm being tricked. So saints, look at this here. We in Genesis chapter four. In verse two, it says, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Both of these are remarkable assignments. Even though Cain was ended up choosing to be wicked, he had a wonderful assignment from God. Being a tiller of the ground is not a bad thing. It is actually mean that he had a strong sowing anointing given to him. All right. So. When you look at Cain's, and, and see, this is something that makes a lot of people miss too. Like, even if somebody is wicked, it don't disqualify them from the fact that God has given them a powerful destiny. Now, they're not living out that powerful destiny, 
but the power of destiny is still there. So Cain is wicked, but God gives him a powerful destiny. He's a tiller of the ground, meaning he has an intense sowing anointing given to him. A tiller of the ground meaning somebody that sows greatly. They sow with aggression. So now you can understand why it was disrespectful for him to sow weak. You're a tiller of the ground, so strong. And so he was disrespecting the dimension that was delivered to him. So Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts disrespected their dimension of sowing because they was given a dimension to sow. That's why they had that level of money because they was given that dimension to sow. Now, the fact that God gave Cain a strong sowing anointing, that means that he had a lot of wealth that was laid up for him. The strength of the sowing anointing you receive is the strength of the wealth, the money, the provision that you're supposed to steward on earth. So if God only telling me to sow $50, I'll be very concerned. <laughs> if God only tell me to sow $20, $2, even $100, I'm going to get concerned because I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on now. I'm going to go beyond that because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking for exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to the power that works in me. So I have, I, I can choose I can choose to unlock a greater financial God in Jehovah. I, I, can, I can unlock a greater financial God realm a greater dimension in money through Jehovah. So saints, that's why sowing is so amazing because even though the Lord trusts you with a certain level of money, you could persuade God, get me out of grade three. Let me skip this grade. Saints, imagine when you was going to school, you went grade one, grade two, grade three. Imagine you being in grade three and start doing grade five work. And they say, let me skip you up to five grade levels. And all the other parents saying, how could you switch her? to grade five and all of our children are in grade three. This is against the law. And then they start showing you evidence. Well, look, ma'am, they already passed grade four stuff. They already passed grade three stuff. It will actually be bad if we keep them in grade three because it's like they have the advantage over everybody. So we put them in grade five. Through sowing, you can convince God otherwise because you're wise. My goodness. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, I'm not a hypocrite to this. I live this. I do this all the time. I'm a sower. I'm a sower. And saying seed come back to me quickly. The other day, I went to sow a seed, and in two seconds, somebody came up to me and gave me money. That, that's, 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 that's how it worked for me. Because I am a general in sewing. It's actually one of my key weapons. I, I don't I don't play with that grace and that glory. I still move in that and I don't put my trust in money. I, I, don't, I would never put my trust in no money. Money is a Judas. You got to train Judas. You got to keep Judas on a leash. You put your trust in money, money will betray you. Money will be a harlot to you if you trust in it. They'll prostitute your trust. You see Proverbs, uh, Solomon was saying that money will develop wings and fly away. Yeah, that's real. That's real. You never put your trust in money. No matter how much money the Lord going to give you in this life, which is not really even up to the Lord, it's really up to you because it's, it's what you choose to unlock. If you, don't, if you don't activate that dimension of the abundant God, you're not going to have abundance. But, but you are the one deciding everything. It's your decisions that's determining the dimension of wealth you walk in. But I'll never put my trust in no money. I'll never put my trust in things. I'll never put my trust in houses and lands, cars, nothing. My trust going to remain in the power of the Spirit of God. 
And that's why I keep on sowing. People, do you know that some people, they stop sowing because they have actually trusted the money now. And they think that they accumulate so much money that they can trust it. No. I will always sow like I'm living underneath the bridge. I'm a sow with desperation. Sow with passion. Sow with, with desperation. Sow like you need a uh, yesterday turnaround. Don't sow like I'm good. I'll just give something because I, I don't want to seem like I'm disrespectful. So like your life is on the line and you're, you're recognized that your life will never be on the line. That's going to go over some of y'all head. If you sow like your life is on the line, your life will never be on the line. There is a sowing that foreknows danger. Because sowing is so prophetic, those seeds will go into 2024 and say, when the, end, when the Arctic freeze come, my power ain't going to be touched. When the snowstorms come, my power ain't going to be touched. There are seeds that will go into January 2024 and say, when people are having chaos and weather patterns, then weather patterns ain't going to touch that little town that I'm in, that city that I'm in. I'm a govern that principality. There are seeds that give ministering spirits locations to go before you so that when you get there, money cometh, health cometh, protection cometh. Seeds sowing today, when you're doing it in the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, it is going into the future and securing you. It is your security guard. It is you allowing the father to sit on every location where your feet treads and protect you from all harm and danger. And saints, there's a lot of people, they, they don't even recognize how much danger is waiting for them. They don't sow no seed. They don't know that sickness waiting for them, disease waiting for them, pain waiting for them, random shootings waiting for them. You can't Saints, the seed protects you from danger of every kind. 